If you got your Bibles, turn to Psalms 37. That's what the Lord dropped in my heart. I like it when he drops a fun message into my heart. Because Lord knows he's taught me a whole bunch. And the way he teaches me is a good smack on the back of the head. Because that's what it takes to get through to a Reynolds. Come on. <laughs> Amen. But Psalm 37, I'm just going to start at the beginning. You know, I have the day, I recommend you getting this. You know, I can tell when I'm in the Word a little bit more because I catch the spirit of giving. I start wanting to give and do this and do that for somebody because I get into the Word. And His love, one of the biggest forms of His expression of His love is you start giving. Amen. Amen. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. So I know when I'm in the word because that spirit, I kept, dad preached on it last week. It's the spirit of faith. It's addicting. You catch it. It's the same thing with that spirit of giving. And you can test where you're at because of that spirit. If you're holding on to stuff and wanting to grab everything you can and save and put away and get what's mine because it's mine, well, I'm, I could tell you right now, the word isn't in you that week. How do I know? Because I lived it. I know when there's weeks where I'm just angry and mad at everything, I haven't been putting the word in me. Amen? That's the Amen. That's for somebody. Get that word in you because he, I'm telling you what, you just want to give, give, give. But Psalms 37, verse 1, I'm reading from the King James right now. It says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. That's this whole past year summed up in one little verse. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Don't ever envy sinners. Don't envy them. Whether they have everything you think you want, don't envy them for a second. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. I tell you what, I'm cutting down the grass every week right now. <laughs> And I'm trusting the Lord to do the same with those evildoers. Yeah. Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. I, I just told you, the spirit of giving is doing good. Catch it. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Doesn't say anything about money there, does it? It just says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. This is the verse I wanted to get to, Psalms 37, verse 4. Delight thyself. Delight yourself. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And what? I love his promises. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. He shall give you the desires of your heart. I'm telling you what, it is good to be saved. And if you're not, get saved. Because he starts putting desires in you that are good, not only for you, but for everyone you come in contact with. Everyone. And he wants to give them to you. So start delighting yourself in him. Every single day, wake up and just delight yourself in what he's given you. Amen? And then tell him what your desires are. I'm telling you, he already knows, but he wants to hear it. He wants you to start speaking it. Amen? Hallelujah. Those desires are yours. Turn to Galatians. Uh, let me find that. This is going to prove that those desires he gives you are from him. And the Lord really dropped this whole thing into my spirit this morning. This wasn't even in my notes. They might be scrambling back there for the verse. Galatians in chapter 5, and it talks about freedom in Christ. I'm going to start, I mean, you, you need to read that whole chapter. Take the time, read that whole chapter, Freedom in Christ. That's why a lot of this stuff that went on this past year wars against us as Christians. Because his spirit of freedom is in us, pulsing through us every day of our lives. So we, we know exactly when something contrary to that rubs up against us. We don't have to be fed it by anybody. We know it. It's there. The things of God are constantly warring against the things of this world. Constantly. 
the world doesn't teach you to give and to give unconditionally, to not expect anything in return from whoever you might be giving something to. That wars against the very spirit that, that is in this world. It does. The things of God are constantly at war with the things of this world. That's why the people that are preaching his word are going to be persecuted, period. You don't get away from that in this world because you're preaching the things of God. And it drives the world crazy, and rightfully so, because they can't touch it, they can't stop it, they can't contain it, and they definitely can't stand against it. Amen? Amen? You, just, you watch it play out over and over again. It seems like a cycle just in the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel is God's chosen people. Whether you like it or not, they are. So there's always going to be persecution and wars and people trying to destroy them and wipe them off the face of the earth. Because they are God's people. Amen? Hallelujah. And we have that same spirit that now lives in us. That same spirit. But Galatians chapter 5. Let's start in verse 13. I'm reading now from the New Living Translation. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. This is talking to people that have been saved. Are you listening? The nature, like I said, the spirit of this world is designed... To lust after things, to go after things that are temporary, that are fleeting, that might feel good for a moment, but they don't last. Hello? But don't use your freedom that the Lord has given you to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law, though I like these things because I'm a simple guy. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Don't give me a list of 22 things that you can do to to fulfill the law. This just says, for the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's more trying, I think, than it's ever been. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. Verse 16, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. I said, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. You have to be sensitive to that. That's, that's a you part you have to get sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's saying to you. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. That's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us desires. This is what I'm getting to. The Holy Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of, the, of Moses. And verse 19 says a lot of things about if you're following those sinful natures. But let's skip down to verse 22 because this is a feel-good message. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. The New Living says there is no law against these things. Let me read them again so you know that when you're, being, when you're following the Holy Spirit, when you're listening to the things he's telling you to do, when, you're, when you have those desires planted deep in your heart and you're, you're believing to see them come to pass... In the meantime, this is what the Holy Spirit produces in you. This kind of fruit, love, joy, peace, love, joy, peace, peace. You know, I missed that one last night, peace. When I sat down at our kitchen table for dinner, it's my fault that there was not peace at that dinner table because I said something to my wife that I never should have. And if you're watching, honey, forgive me. The Lord is constantly teaching me to be a better man. Because if it's up to me, you're going to wait a while. But it's up to him, amen? amen? And I said some things that caused anything but peace. <laughs> so I did the next best thing I knew to do, which was shut my mouth the rest of the time. But I'm responsible for that. In my house, I'm responsible for that. Regardless 
of if I'm right or wrong and whatever the argument was. Hello, I'm talking to you guys. Hello, I just exposed myself and what I did last night. She prepared that meal, it was a great meal, and I said something that I shouldn't have said, and it did not cause peace. Whose fault is that? Mine. What if she came at me with something? Whose fault is it that there's not peace at that table in my house? Who's the head of the household? I am. It's my fault. Spiritually, I missed it somewhere. And I definitely didn't yield. Amen? But thank God I got enough gumption in me to say, yeah, it is my fault. And I shut my mouth. And I have to apologize to my wife and ask her for her forgiveness. And I thank God she will forgive me. That's a faith statement. Because <laughs> she's tougher than I am. I'll tell you that right now. But hallelujah. Hallelujah. Check where those fruits of the Spirit are. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. See that? The Holy Spirit gives you the self-control you need to walk away from those lusts of the flesh, to not keep your eyes on things that are temporary, that are fleeting, that can control you when you keep your eyes on them. Hello? Amen? But I'm delighting myself in the Lord because I want the desires of my heart to come to pass. Amen? I want to see my kids healthy, strong, blessed, prospering in everything they put their hand to. I want to see my kids have favor with everyone they come in contact with. A divine favor. A favor that's everlasting. A favor that's built on this foundation. Not a favor with, that's fleeting because somebody likes them. That's emotional. That can change. But a favor that they just don't even know. They can't put their finger on it, but I, those kids are the best. I like those kids. <laughs> when people like your kids, they tend to do things for them, don't they? <laughs> Hello. When they don't like them, they tend not to do things for them. <laughs> just the opposite. Amen? But don't use this freedom that the Lord's given us to give in to those sinful things. But use that freedom to do good. Amen? The Lord's given me a little challenge after every payday to get out a little bit of money and before the weekend's out to give it to somebody. To just give it to them, to bless them. The Lord will lead you if you start actively searching for that and letting the Holy Spirit do that. That's just something, he's, a little thing he just gave me to start doing. Just a little act that can change my immediate world. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And what am I doing there? I'm doing good and I'm sowing seed. I'm sowing seed. I'm sowing seed. If you need a harvest, what do you got to start doing? Sow. sow seed. If you need a big harvest, what do you got to start doing? Sow. sow a big seed. A seed that's going to stretch the daylights out of you. <laughs> but I need that money for this. I need it for that. And the Lord says, how about this? I'll take care of that. <laughs> Amen? Next verse. I love proving this stuff out. If you have, I started to get into this. If you don't have one of these, get it. Dake Annotated Reference Bible. The, a Dake Reference Bible. This man spent over 43 years of his life creating this. Over 100,000 hours were spent researching and taking the Bible at its most literal of meetings and giving you facts, historical facts, all kinds of facts surrounding it. Like in the, in the side here of what I just read in Psalms 37, there's, it says there's 25, 25 promises just in, the, in Psalms, 30, Psalms 37. 25 just in that little chapter. Number one, it says, dwell in the land forever. Number two, be fed. Number three, give. It'll give you the desires of your heart. He will give you the desires of your heart. Four, bring things to pass. Five, bring righteousness to light. Six, bring judgment as noonday. Seven, evildoers will be cut off. Eight, earth as an inheritance. Nine, abundance of peace upheld by God as ten, eternal inheritance. Not be ashamed in evil times. 
satisfied in a time of famine, satisfied in a time of not be cast down in, fall, in a fall, not forsaken by God, preservation by God forever. This is stuff that was, you just research, you look, read the whole verse. You don't realize it even sometimes when you're reading it. All these promises. None of your steps shall slide. Lord will not give over to the wicked, give you over to the wicked. Lord will not condemn. In the end, you will have peace, salvation, strength from God, strength for, from God in times of trouble, help from God, and deliverance from the wicked. Twenty-five promises in one little hello. Boy, am I glad I have this. Turn over to Proverbs. I think they have this back there because I had it. Chapter 10. I love hearing the pages turn. We're going back to the Bible here. Get rid of those iPads. They're watching your every move anyways. <laughs> Proverbs 10 and verse 24. It says, the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon them. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon them. Faith and fear are two and the same, just at opposite ends of the spectrum. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. I don't know about you, but I, can, I tend to take these promises pretty literally. If it says it, I can have it. Amen? What else would you want to believe in this day and age? For, and, and then it even gives, it, again, this is out of the date, it gives four examples of, of righteous desires granted in the Bible. One, a couple of the stories, one is of, of Hannah, and over in 1 Samuel, if you want to look at that, you can. But basically, she couldn't have a child. She was made fun of, you know, cast down, wasn't given the things she wanted. She basically got fed up and said, Lord, give me a child. If you do, I'll give them right back to you. And guess what happened? She had a child. His name was Samuel. And he did some pretty amazing things that was written about in the Bible. <laughs> Found some pretty amazing people, too. A prophet of God. Amen? Another story is of Esther. If you read about that, yes, there is a book in the Bible called Esther. <laughs> It's okay to admit you didn't know that. <laughs> but Esther was of Israel, a Jew. And a king that was not Jewish took over that kingdom. And then an evil man, guess what he wanted to do? Wipe out all the Jews. And he was one of the most powerful men under this king. And then he made a law that said on this day, about a year from now, in one single day, if you kill a Jew, the one you killed, you got everything they owned. Hello? If you do this, well, you get a chance for a million dollars. But there was a faithful woman that God had already promoted within that kingdom. And she was obedient to the one... She was supposed to be a Mordecai, I believe, right? Yeah, she was obedient to him. You know, and she hid that she was a Jew for a very long time. But she had favor with this king and moved right up the ranks till she became queen, just like that, because of the favor of the Lord that was on her life. And what did Mordecai do after this decree went out to kill, in the year they were going to kill all the Jews? He ran to Esther and said, you need to do this. And she said, no way. How about we pray about it for a while? <laughs> and she did. She told them, let's pray and fast. They did. And guess what she ended up doing? She went in before the king. And in those days, for, to not be called in by the king and to just go in, you can be killed just like that, just upon entering his chamber. He has to hold up his gold scepter to say, no, let, let that person in. So by faith, she did it. She pleaded with him. She exposed the one that had come up with this decree as evil. And not only that, if you back up and read it, I read this whole thing. I just love these stories because they bring the light so much. The night before, she went in to see the king. The king couldn't sleep. 
And what, what, what thing, why couldn't he sleep? Because, and when he couldn't sleep, I should say, what did he usually ask to do? He, he had somebody come in and bring, basically bring in history books and read to him the history of everything he had done to make himself feel good again, probably. So he'd go to sleep. But anyways, this one night, they read about Mordecai and how he had exposed somebody evil that was plotting to kill the king. And it saved the king's life. And the king's like, well, did we do anything for Mordecai? And they're like, nope, not a thing. <laughs> and so what happened? Well, everything that that evil guy had planned for the Jews got flipped on his own head, and he died by the way he planned to kill Mordecai. Long story short. And since the king couldn't reverse a decree, he basically made an, he let Mordecai write another decree that said, well, if they want to try to kill all the Jews, the Jews have every right to unite, create their own, own army, and fight them all off. So guess what happened a year from then when they were supposed to kill all the Jews? The Jews won. <laughs> cool story, huh? But I'm telling you what, they delighted themselves in the Lord. And he gave them the desires of their heart. But it took a big step of faith, too, when you read that story. There's other stories in there listed. There's one of Daniel, one of Simeon. These are all things. This is why you need to get one of these Bibles. Because it brings to light so much things that are just, they're so cool. You start reading about them, you're like, wow, I never put that together. I never saw it that way. And he spent over 43 years of his life putting together one work. I think we need to access that, huh? It's better than Google. I said it's better than Google. I don't know about you, but we've become Google this, Google that. I'm as guilty as anybody. I need to find something Google. <laughs> How dependent we've become on something that's so flippant. Amen. Next verse. Whenever I get going, I need to get back onto my notes. Let's go over to Mark eleven twenty four. I'm flipping with you. Thank you, Jesus, that we're delighting ourselves in the Lord. We're learning to take pleasure in hanging out with you, Jesus. Taking pleasure. There is nothing better than just spending time with you and thanking you for everything you're doing in our lives. Mark 11, verse 24 from the New Living Translation. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. There's also the next verse. Don't forget that part. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. I know we all like to think we're perfect. We got it all figured out and straightened out. And, you know, when we pray, it's obviously going to happen, even though I'm holding on to this grudge over here about what somebody did to me at work. They're wrong. I'm right. They need to come apologize until I let it go. Nope. Forgive them. Amen? Just like I know my wife has forgiven me. Gosh, I hope she's watching. I'm trying hard. <laughs> Amen. But verse 24 says, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. It is that simple. I'm telling you what. I heard Keith Moore, though, a long time ago, say sometimes the bigger the thing you're praying for or believing for, sometimes you've got to be willing to stand a little bit longer for it. He said, not all the time. He said, but there's some times where you're believing for something real big, you've got to be willing to stand for it real big. And if you're anything like me, there's doubt that enters your head almost every day of your life. There's doubt about this, doubt about that. Unbelief about this, or I don't know how that can happen. Start trying to figure it out, don't you? Catch yourself. Let that peace of God start guarding your heart and your minds. Amen? Because it will. I'm telling you what, his peace will guard your mind. Amen? Amen. There is some truth to that. Turn over to 1 Peter 2, 2. I'm trying to give you as many verses as I can that show you these desires that the Lord puts in your heart are yours. 
Just start delighting yourself in him. And watch him come to pass quicker than ever. 1 Peter 2 and verse 2. The more you get into the word, the more you start, your desires start aligning with this verse. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. He's telling you to, to the more you get into the word, especially as newborn babies, but the more you mature too, the more you start craving this word. The more your desires start to line up with this word, period the more you crave it. Like I said, the more you get into it, what happens to you? The more you just want to start giving and doing good and giving and doing good. Amen? Because I'm telling you what, your flesh doesn't want to do that at all times. If you're anything like me, maybe you're better than me. I, I get that. But my flesh, a lot of times, doesn't want to do that stuff. I worked really hard for this. It's mine. Get away from me. That's your flesh. It really is. And you can reason it out really easily. Well, I spent 60 hours working this week. I just want to sit here and be left alone. If you got kids, that ain't going to happen, first of all. <laughs> and I thank God for them. What a blessing they are. <laughs> My property now, it's a little bit of a walk to the mail. And after that peaceful dinner we had last night, <laughs> my son was involved in that a little bit. He's just like his daddy, I think. A little hard-headed, a little stubborn. But after dinner, he disappears for a while. I'm like, where did that boy go? And he comes back, and he's got the mail. And he, he was all proud. Look, Dad, I got the mail. He goes, he goes, I think there's some money in here, Dad. It's nothing but bills. But he, in his heart, it was just his way of doing good and making up for messing up. And it blessed me because I'm like, I've never asked him to ever do that. And it was a haul. And the way back is all uphill. And he was so happy when he hands me this mail. Out of nowhere, I'm like, where did that come from? And the Lord's like, he's trying to do good for you. <laughs> Amen? Boy, do kids bless you that way. Amen. But 1 Peter 2.2 2 says, desire the word. Desire the word. Get to that point in your life where you're putting the word in you so much that that's what you're desiring above all else. And I'm telling you what, everything else will shake out and line up. It really will. Everything else will start to shake out and line up in your life. Amen? There's times where it feels like all hell is breaking loose. I know. I just spent a year walking through it as a small business owner. When you're dependent on offices that don't exist anymore. The Lord starts to teach you, well, who are you really dependent on? Are you really getting my plan for your life? Or are you depending on what you're seeing? Are you depending on all the reports you've been producing? Are you putting pressure on your customers that you do have? Or are you trusting in the living God who will give to all men liberally? A good use of the word liberal. He doesn't want to withhold anything from us. That's what I love about him. That's why I love serving him. That's why I enjoy making choices sometimes that prove who I'm following and where I'm going. Because there's times where all of a sudden you're in an atmosphere where, yeah, everybody, hey, why aren't you drinking, Joe? Why aren't you doing this? Have a drink with us. How about no? They don't ask too much after that. And then they, you know what they start doing after that? They start quietly watching you. Yes, absolutely. They start noticing that when your kids are doing stuff, they're succeeding. Well, my kids are doing the same thing. Why aren't they doing as well as your kids are doing? <laughs> well, that's because they got a good teacher. <laughs> eh, nope. Well, it's because my kids love the Lord. 
They know where their help comes from. Amen? And those people watch you like a hawk. Because if you've got something they don't have, guess what they want? They want what you have. They just don't realize all it entails yet. But they will. It has nothing to do with things, materials, and everything to do with the living God who gives to all men liberally and never withholds, especially to those he loves, especially to his chosen people. Amen? Amen. So the more you start seeing the desires of your heart come true, be ready, because it ain't always going to come with a bunch of roses and everybody loves you all of a sudden. They're going to know why you got it, how you got it, and why they don't have it. And if they're not saved, they ain't going to like it. Sorry. That's just the way it is. I said the things of God are constantly at war with the things of this world. Constantly. That won't change until we leave, until we go to our heavenly homes. Amen? So if there ain't a little bit of persecution button up against you, well, you ain't doing much. I'm preaching to myself here. Because there's times where I like to coast and put it on cruise control. And be comfortable. Because I work hard, dang it. But I'm telling you, when you're, when you're sensitive to the things of the Spirit, when you're doing the things the Lord's leading you to do, when you're getting stretched by God, things are going to start popping in your life. And just expect some people to get angry and upset with you. But don't use it. Don't use those new freedoms, those new things that you just got as a chance to sin. But use it as a chance to do good. Amen? amen. I said amen. amen. What does amen mean? So be it. Amen? amen. One more verse. Turn to 1 John 5.15. I can find it. It's in the back somewhere. Start with verse 13. Back up to verse 13. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. I believe I'm talking to a bunch of believers in here. So that you may know you have eternal life. Verse 14. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, when we let our desires be known, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Amen. I just love the Lord because he, is, he, just, he talks to me so simply. And he just asks for me to believe so simply. It ain't always easy to stand in that belief. Especially when persecution comes. Especially when you want to check the dollar amount. It ain't always easy to stand in those things. But he never asks us to check those things, does he? He asks us to check the word. What does the word say? Whatever you ask for, I will give it to you. And I thank God I'm saved because I know my desires are things he wants to give to me. Amen? And what he's teaching me and leading me through right now is there's times where he'll give me things that I've been desiring, but that specific thing might not even be for me, but for a time. Maybe I'm supposed to turn around and give it to somebody else who's been believing for the same thing. Oh, what a joy that is, too. I am telling you what. I get no better joy than giving things. I just don't. I've received some great things, but I get no better joy than giving things. I don't care how big they are. I like giving cars to people. It's a fun thing to do, to pay for someone to drive a very nice vehicle that has nothing to do with me personally other than I know their job is to save souls. To evangelize. There was a time where I couldn't afford one car. Amen? Amen. 
that the Lord has blessed me to be able to do that. And I thank him every day for that. Because there is no better joy. There just isn't. Than being able to give something to someone. Especially those you love, but it, even someone you don't even know. Like I said, that challenge the Lord has given me on the weekends, before the weekend's over, to bless someone that has nothing to do with me that I can never expect anything in return from, but to bless them. Amen? Amen. Oh, I can't wait to see the harvest that comes up too and what will have me do with that. Because his harvest, there's not room enough to even contain it. Is there? His harvest, you know it's his harvest because there's not even room enough to contain it. You can't keep it all is what he's saying. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And I love this church because we've caught the spirit of that. We really have. We absolutely have, and we've walked it out in our lives. We've seen lives change. We've seen people come up from nothing into something. What's next? Amen? What's next for this church? The body of believers in a state that's trying to run everybody off. Yeah. R-U-N-N-O-F-T. <laughs> but we are here and planted for a purpose. The Lord kept saying to me yesterday when I was walking around my, my house, planted like the cedars in Lebanon. I've never seen them, but I'm sure they're a magnificent sight. I just kept saying that over and over again. I'm sure they're a firm, firm tree with an impressive root system. I am planted. How about you? Maybe he's planted you in Florida part-time. Trying not to be envious of you. <laughs> nope, I know you've gotten the desires of your heart. Amen? I know there's people in this church that faithfully dedicate themselves to this church that have seen those desires come to pass in a miraculous way. Amen? And what he's done for others, he will do for me. And you too. Amen?